เอากุยจ่อ please be seated on คุณนุ่ยประ president veuillez vous asseoir the court is now back in session and uh, the chamber would like now to see the floor through a council congressman to put questions to the expert qui pourra interroger l'expert je vous en prie congressman thank you Merci, Monsieur le Président. Good afternoon, Major Honours. Bon après-midi, Madame Elizabeth Becker. Good afternoon, Miss Elizabeth Becker. Bon après-midi, Madame Elizabeth Becker. I have some questions for you. J'ai des questions à vous poser. The first topic is in relation to your book. Il s'agit de votre livre. There is document A3/20. My question to you is the following: What is your knowledge about the, the Khmer culture? That is the, the general behavior of uh, uh, Cambodian people. Can you describe it to the board? Des Cambodiens en général? Réponse. Could you be slightly more specific? Behavior of Cambodian people, culture. I'm, what do you, do you mean? Living culture, the arts. Do you mean uh, the religious traditions? Do you mean family traditions? There are many aspects of this. When I refer to uh, culture. Quand j'ai parlé de la culture. That is the way people behave in a society. So, what is your, your general understanding of a Cambodian culture? I don't refer to any, any specific aspect of the culture. Je ne faisais référence à aucun aspect particulier. Well, my understanding um, initially was based on my studies at the University of Washington, where I received a degree in South, South, South Asian Studies, and that included, of course, your basic uh, intense study of um, Indian societies, Sanskritized, Pali. And the Indianized States, what's called the Indianized States of Southeast Asia. That would include, of course, Cambodia. Um, then, um, after language studies in India, I returned to the University of Washington and did more graduate studies, and um, including more on the Indianized states of Southeast Asia, the history, the culture. And then I came here as a reporter, and um, you know, obviously my reporting work enriched my understanding, and I took Khmer language lessons as well. Thank you. La défense. Merci. Did you have uh, engage in any specific study of the Cambodian culture? Étudié de manière yes, spécifique at the University of Washington, Washington, as I said, it was required oui, for my major. So, South Asian studies and Sanskrit, Sanskritized countries, that would be essentially the, the line between Sinicized and Sanskritized cultures is, in fact, the, the Cambodian-Vietnam border. So um, as I learned you know, the basic history and faith, Council interrupt. Uh, thank you uh, for uh, your response. Merci. What I wanted to hear from you is your specific study on the topic of a Cambodian culture. Can you give us some, some uh, concrete examples on that? Um, I don't remember the names of the courses I took. I'm sorry. It's been way, my, I got my BA in 1969, and then I did my graduate studies in 70, 71. Seven, I, I can't remember all the courses. Sorry. Et ensuite euh, un autre plus tard, mais je ne me souviens plus. Question. Would like you to refer to the third chapter of your book. Je vous renvoie au troisième chapitre de votre livre. Which uh, you talked Ici, about the 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 lines. To a treacherous activity, free translation by Les the interpreter. In that section, you 
described et ici, a folk tale and that you claimed it was a Cambodian folk tale vous dites que c'est un conte cambodgien c'est l'histoire d'une femme qui a trahi to, uh, to son mari qui a voulu le tuer pour man. avoir une liaison avec un autre homme and she uh, cheated her, la femme her husband, est uh, so on and so à son mari à plusieurs reprises and in your uh, conclusion on uh, that uh, story telling vous tirez une conclusion de ce conte me, uh, populaire je vais en lecture uh, page 67 to 68 67 of your book et à la page 68 Ian in uh, uh, english en anglais is 0023 0023 76 76 72 through 73 in France 0063 83 44 et 45 44 et 45 Quote, and it is true that a culture with such a folktale is not a folktale that is most light than the name of uh, the, the, the country The lies reflects the, the cruel acts that were unexplainable, inexplicable, and that it spread over Cambodia during the war time and during its uh, revolution. Elles sont un and de la that's violence, the path aussi, uh, leading to treacherous activity. Une violence qui est un trait du caractère national depuis l'époque d'encore au moins. And I like to ask you the uh, following question. Et une question à vous poser. When you made such a conclusion, what were the factors or facts concerning a Khmer culture that uh, led you Quels to conclude that such a folktale could be used as an example of a path a country is led into? Thank you. Um, this was an example. I use this to say that Cambodia was not an entirely passive, gentle nation. Um, I don't, you're too young, but um, particularly during the French period, the Khmer were considered gentle, fun-loving, nice people, and the Vietnamese were the the tough guys and the ones that you can really count on and the Lao were lazy and there were all kinds of prejudices and when when the war started here in 1970 they said, how can this happen there was all kinds of um, atrocities committed so on and so forth this was a gentle land they never do this and so this was a way and this is as you notice this is a, a, a Khmer folk tales by Im and Savan Prum Cambodians um, this is a way to say This is not in t it's not single-mindedly gentle as its reputation, and that's what I was saying. That there are there are also these other paths in it. It's not the single path. That there are that it's a very complicated culture. It's a very rich, complicated culture, and there is this streak in it. So it's not single-mindedly gentle. Thank you. Question, merci. Can you also uh, tell the court? Were there other folk tales nous dire également that you think are good examples? Si pour vous, d'autres uh, contes populaires constituent de bons exemples. Good examples to uh, support your uh, conclusion. Qui pourraient étayer vos conclusions? Other than the one folk tales that you mentioned in your book. The names of other reporters? Is that what you asked? I'm sorry. Council, I refer to other folk tales because uh, in your book you, you use a folk tales as an example as a path leading to uh, treacherous uh, activities and that you refer to that folk tale as an example of a Cambodian uh, culture. Can you think of other folk tales that you can use as an example in, in place of the folk tale that you use? In your book. Qui pourrait constituer d'autres exemples. Well, in fact, that collection, Pense. Khmer Folk Tales, has many, many other um, folk tales. Dans cette collection, il y a effectivement beaucoup d'autres contes populaires.
My question is rather question. simple. Of course, uh, there, question, there could be other folk tales, Cambodian folk tales, but as an author of uh, the book, did you compare the folk tale that you selected to other folk tales uh, from the collection before you, decide, you decided to include that in your book? Yes. Yes, I did. Je l'ai fait. Thank you. Question. Merci. Do you have anything else to add, uh, rather than the, what you said about the Cambodian land is a, a non-gentle one? Um, I did not say it was a non-gentle one. I said it was more than, there's more sides to it. Let me repeat. The reason I used that folktale was people were shocked that the gentle land of Cambodia could have people who would commit such atrocities. And so I was trying to say this is a very sophisticated culture with many parts of the culture. And this is not, and just like we, if you know our European history of folk tales, we also have folk tales that will make your hair stand on end. So this, this is showing that in, as in many cultures, you have a broad span of streams of, of, of um, scary things like this. So this was putting Cambodia right where all other cultures are. It's not simply gentle. It's a much more complicated story. Question. Your response uh, and the previous response doesn't seem to go together. Can you tell us clearly whether the land of Cambodia was full of uh, violence or cruel acts, or whether you think uh, the land of Cambodia uh, is uh, a gentle one? Please uh, tell us one which is of your opinion. Voyez-vous nous dire ce que vous en pensez? Quel est votre avis en la matière? I did not say it was either or. Réponse: Je n'ai pas dit que Cambodia, like all cultures, has a gentle streak, and it also has a violent streak. All cultures are that way, and this was establishing that Cambodia was more than a passive gentle. There are other things. This is not an either or. And as I just said, we have in our European in tradition, Comme things like the grim fairy tales that have similar kinds of scary things. And you have fairy tales, you have grim stories, so that it's, it's not either or. I was establishing that Cambodia was more than a single dimension gentle land, that it was a rich cultural heritage that included violence. Thank you. Question, merci. Allow me uh, to read the next part of the end that I just uh, gave it to you. The peasants of uh, the Angkor era Le paysan du royaume Angkor lived under the uh, gentle and kind king, and they required to pay a tax through the hardship in order uh, to get the money, to build the temple, to pray to the God. End of a quote. Fin de citation. I read parts of your articles of interest from the book and that lu you use uh, excerpts from Chief Da Kwan, vu que vous aviez cité who Chief Kwan. Uh, was a Chinese and who discovered Angkor Chinois, at the time. Uh, My question to you is the, the following. 
Alors je vous pose la question suivante. Did you compare that report to other reports uh, done by other researchers on Cambodia that is on the sovereignty and the, the management of the land by other kings before you included that portion into uh, your book? Et ce, bien sûr, avant d'en parler dans votre livre. Or whether you consulted other documents uh, produced by various other experts, President Interrupts. Counselor, could you tell the chamber the relevancy of your questions to the facts being tried before this court as part of case 002-02? Because uh, through my understanding, your question is rather Car far from the facts before us. Your question nous semble assez éloignée des faits abordés ici. Could you uh, tell us the reasons behind uh, your uh, line of questioning? Nous expliquer quel est votre raisonnement? Cancer consume on. Yes, uh, I'll elaborate further on that, Mr. Oui, President. Oui, je vais m'expliquer, Monsieur le Président. I'd like to question the conclusion of this expert on the uh, political path or line of uh, Democratic Campuchia, and they, she compared it uh, through a folk tale on Le about the path through a treacherous activity, and that it was linked to a Cambodian uh, culture. And what I am trying to do is to put a question to experts that uh, what, moi, she, uh, what she read was not part of the main Cambodian culture. Dire à en fait, tout cela President, uh, pas bien à la Madam Expert, Cambodian. you do not need to respond to uh, the last question Madame put to you, as it is uh, as it falls far out of the effects being voyez, tried before this court. Council uh, on. Allow me to move on with my uh, line Bien, of questioning. Also in uh, your book, Toujours dans at votre livre, ERN, ERN, in English, en anglais, zero, zero, two, three, two, three. Seven seven sept, sept, seven five sept, cinq, and in French zero français, zero six zero, three, zero, six, three six, eight trois, three huit, trois, forty seven quatre, and sept, in Khmer zero Khmer, zero, zero two zero, three deux, trois, two zero deux, zero nine two neuf deux. And I like you. And I like to quote a passage from your book. Je cite à nouveau un passage de votre livre. To enhance nationalist credentials, the Vietnamese decided that each of the three Indo-Chinese countries should have its own party and not be grouped together in one regional body. The Lao and Khmer communists would Lao have their own organizations if not full-fledged parties and thereby broadened their appeal within their countries. End of a quote. Uh, Madame Expert, the passage that Madame I just read out. Can you uh, tell us which source did you uh, rely upon to uh, produce that this particular passage? Could you please give me the page and I can look up the footnote? It's in your book and it's uh, page 70 in English. Thank you. Page 70 de votre ouvrage. Réponse. Merci. Excuse me. I believe that's from um, the French com the the French Communist Party. I'm not sure. Let me just check the footnote. Je vais vérifier la note de bas de page.
Je pense que c'était le PCF, le Parti communiste français, mais je vais vérifier. Um, the next, the closest was um, Ben Kiernan's PhD, but I believe, if I'm not mistaken, this is sort of the standard history from um, particularly the period when the um, French Communist Party was so um, powerful on them, but I'm, I'm not sure. Thank you. And uh, what is your knowledge and understanding of a joint communist uh, country for all the three countries within Indochina? Probably it, this is also related to the passage that I just read out from your book. Toujours en lien avec ce passage de cette possibilité de regrouper les trois pays um, My understanding is that um, originally uh, the Vietnamese the Communist Party under Ho Chi Minh was um, instructed to be, at some stage, uh, Indochina-wide. And this passage you read was the decision that, this, that there, were, there would be enough Cambodians and enough Lao that they could have their separate parties. Can you uh, tell us who made that decision? If I'm not mistaken, it was the Comintern. I heard uh, through the translation as uh, it was a uh, and who is uh, that uh, gentleman? Uh, Common turn is the old the uh, Soviet common turn. That would be the body that has um, a say over the com This is this is a long time ago that this happened, and it's if you remember correctly from the Soviet um, documents that. Um, the other defense lawyer mentioned. Um, there are ar archival works that show that the Comintern had a very strong interest in how these parties, the Soviet Comintern, how these parties were organized. Thank you. La Défense, merci. In relation to the democratic Cambodian regime, you Pour ce qui est du was a du reporter from 1972 to 74, and you returned again in 1978. My question to you is the following. Did vous poser you la question suivante. produce reports for your period between 1972 through 1978 in relation to border clashes between uh, Vietnam and Cambodia? À des à la um, I wrote many articles as a correspondent here, 72 through 74, and um, in that period, there were no border clashes that I covered, no. 72 through 74. So, you were uh, doing uh, uh, this write about the uh, articles or reports about uh, border clashes? Or were there no uh, border clashes between uh, Vietnamese and uh, Cambodian uh, troops? That is uh, between 1974. The Vietnamese Communist sanctuaries. Then the Vietnamese Communist Army spread across Cambodia. They were engaged in all of the major um, battles 
70, 71, 72, and were instrumental in winning Chenla 1 campaign, Chenla 2 campaign that pretty much um, brought the Lan Nal army to their knees. So the, the, the interest in the Vietnamese army, communist army, was as allies of the, of the, of the Khmer Rouge. And of course, the Vietnamese Communist Army was fighting the Khmer Republic Army. So that was the Khmer Vietnam fight. And it was that was the that was the battle here in Cambodia. Well, I'm going to ask you 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 to ask the uh, Khmer Rouge Army and the Vietnamese uh, Army. Did the incursion of Vietnamese troops into uh, Cambodian territory, in particular during the, it, it, in particular in the liberated zone, were those troops, Vietnamese troops, invited by the, uh, the Democratic Cambodian Army, so were there any other reasons behind their entry into Cambodia? As far as I know and as far as was made public, they were allies. Were they always allies? And there were no a conflict between the, the two forces? Can you elaborate a little bit further? As I said, um, in 1974, I wrote a lengthy piece called Who Are the Khmer Rouge? In that piece, I identified Salat Sar as the head of the Khmer Rouge, and I pointed out that according to the information that I had gathered, there is tension between the Vietnamese communists and the Cambodian communists. And uh, that was an unusual piece of information, and many people doubted it. But was that a border clash, a big border clash? No. I just knew that, and particularly, again, I relied quite heavily on the work Regrets of the Khmer Soul by It Sarin to describe these tensions between the Vietnamese communists and the Cambodian communists. Thank you. La Défense, je vous remercie. On the uh, border issues, and you have stated at some length there about that, at least uh, on three uh, different occasions, that the invasion by the Vietnamese troops into uh, Kampuchea was not of a humanitarian uh, nature, but it was due to a border conflict. Do you still stand by the, your conclusion on this particular issue? Yes. Defense Council, thank you. Do you report on or do you know about the uh, reporting information on the agreement uh, to uh, recognize the border between the resistance movement, including uh, the uh, United France of Cambodia and the Vietnamese Army? No. Defense Council, thank you. La Défense, je vous remercie. During 1976 through to 1978 or early 1979, 
Did you receive any information on the attack on the fighting at the border between DK Army and the Vietnamese Army? Yes, there were quite. A, there was oui. a lot of reporting on that. Defense Council, uh, are you yourself cover and reported about uh, this um, vous -vous attack or uh, war? Ces ou cette I was not Réponse. in. Um, Vietnam then, and I did not get a visa to Democratic Kampuchea until 1978. So my inform and I was a correspondent for the Washington Post in Washington. So my information was what I read from other reporters and from uh, different information services. Council, thank you. Now Je come back to my question uh, on the, the purpose of the creation of uh, Indochina uh, Party de la du parti uh, for the three countries in Indochina. Can you elaborate uh, for the court uh, on this uh, matter? Um, what the, the original um, Indochina party? Um, this was when um, the original, as I remember, Ho Chi Minh wanted a Vietnam Communist Party, and he was talked into an Indochina Communist Party, and then it later divided into Cambodia, Laos, and Vietnam. Council, thank you. I would like to ask uh, further that what was the view or the idea of uh, creation of the uh, Indochina Party was later giving up or it was also uh, furtherance uh, to, to move on into the future? Um, the original view was that there was French Indochina. And so uh, the view was the strongest movement was in Vietnam, but it might as well be Indochinese because the French governed largely Indochina. Council, um, you did not respond to my question, saying what was the policy or the initiative to establish the um, Indochina Party uh, was uh, uh, postponed, or was there any effort to uh, continue to form and operate uh, later in uh, the next uh, decade or so? I'm sorry, I misunderstood your question. I thought you were talking about the original view. So uh, you have the Indochinese Communist Party, and um, it continues. You have the separate parties. I'm, I'm not sure where you, what you want me to add. Defense Council, I would like you to indicate uh, the idea of uh, forming uh, Indochina Party was abandoned or uh, the idea within the three countries was still there that um, they uh, wishes to uh, to form the Indochina Party. In case of abandon, when was it uh, happened? Okay, and I'm, I'm, I believe you, are you referring to the, um, during the war, uh, the American war, 
after the American 65 to 75, there was very much um, a united front kind of Indochina. So you'd see posters with Vietnamese communists, Cambodian communists, Lao communists. And so there was, I, I wouldn't call it a party, but there was definitely a, um, a, a the message getting across was that these three communist parties were fighting the Americans together and they were united against American imperialism and there I believe there was at least one if not two conferences on this and there was an Indo-Chinese united front. Council. I did not receive the response, but I would like to je move on. Réponse, Talking about the fighting uh, between DK Army and Vietnamese uh, Army uh, 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 during 1976 uh, until 1979, you uh, told earlier to the court about the border conflicts. Why? Um, the two countries who who were the, the allies, Ces deux pays why they pays did not proceed with the negotiation to solve the problem? Why did they took the war as a, a, a solution at the time? Because they could not agree on the border, apparently, because um, Democratic Kampuchea um, believed that the Vietnamese were trying to undermine them. Um, I, I will gladly refer to Nayan Chanda's very good um, dissection of this in his book, Brother Enemy. He, he was a witness here. Council, Madame Expert, you gave the Madame argument that the DK uh, regime was fearful of um, become weaker. Uh, can you explain the use of the army force uh, uh, to, uh, to fight against the Vietnamese army along the border? So. Why was it weak in uh, terms of the uh, peaceful negotiation? So could you elaborate uh, a bit further for the court? Well, um, one of the reasons that DK's army was weak was, um, in fact, they'd had um, several purges that um, did weaken the army. Uh, Council, I don't understand your uh, answer. I'm talking Je about the negotiation to uh, finish the uh, conflict on the border, and you said that it uh, weakened uh, the situation, and you said that um, the weakness was because of the uh, the purge within uh, DK. I uh, don't understand the relationship uh, in your response. Uh, could you? Um, Tell me, explain me further. I'm sorry, I didn't understand your question. President, uh, Council, could you please um, um, make your question um, uh, clearer and be more specific so that um, it is um, underst well understood by uh, the expert. Council, um, yeah, thank you, Mr. President. It might be because of a language um, issues. My question is as follow. Why the K regime did not uh, solve the uh, problem with Vietnam during the 1970s? Dans les années 70, but um, 
they use the uh, arm or the weapon to solve the problem. And then the expert responded to me that because uh, the K uh, was weak, uh, the K was fearful that it, um, it will be uh, weak. And I think why it was a kind of fearful because uh, th the there, there was a, an opportunity to have a peaceful uh, negotiation. Pourquoi so, uh, Madame Expert, can you um, respond and tell the court about this? As I understand your question, and I'm going to repeat it to make sure I do understand, please, um, you are asking me why did Democratic Capuchia not solve the problem with Vietnam in the 1970s peacefully? Why did Democratic Capuchia turn to a military solution? Is that correct? President, um, please hold on. Veuillez patienter. Oh, okay. Um, something to respond. That is the big question, isn't it? That is a major question. Why did the Khmer Rouge Democratic Compuchia seek a military solution? And um, as I said earlier, I think they confused the basic state-to-state -state border issues, power issues, with the purges within the country that weakened the country, weakened the military, and um, backed themselves into a corner. The Defense Council, I don't understand at this point. Uh, could you elaborate further in a case where the K army was weak. You said that faible. it related to the internal purge. Is this the reason why Bien. the DK um, not to continue a war with Vietnam unless DK had a powerful army and then it can start a war with the uh, military uh, measure. So um, can you explain uh, this point? Um, that is a very good question, and I think it's a conundrum. I don't know if it's easily explained. President, uh, Council, could you please move on? Council, thank you, Mr. President. I would like to ask you further on the negotiation, negotiations between uh, Democratic Cambodia and uh, Vietnam during the uh, era. À du My question is that uh, did you receive or did you cover and report uh, any political negotiation um, on uh, the two uh, issues uh, happened between the two countries? Entre, au sujet de ce qui passé entre on the border question, you're referring to the border question, yes? Vous parlez de la question frontalière? Council, other issues other than uh, the border. As I said, in that period, I lived in Washington, D.C. I was not in Vietnam or Cambodia, and um, any meetings between Vietnam and Cambodia did not take place in the United States, so no. Aux États-Unis, donc non. 
Defense Council. Uh, my question is not for uh, the period Et or the time when you were there and later on did you uh, conduct any suite, research on uh, those kind of uh, negotiations? Um, yes. Council, did you find any um, problem in the diplomatic or other problem that were major for uh, the two countries uh, to be solved? Um, there are many problems between bon, Cambodia and Vietnam. Bon and, um, and there was a, the, the one um, primary, the times when I could talk to them was when both the Vietnamese and the Cambodians were at the United Nations. Uh, and at those points, you could talk to them and you would certainly get some handouts. But often the, the problems were disguised in um, rather terse, difficult um, to understand um, handouts. But uh, by as I said earlier, by 1977, it, they were making it clear that they were having serious issues. And, um, and I was just, you were just reminded me of something. Um, the first time, you know, in, in, during the, 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 I'll call it the American War period, that border issues came up, actually came up between Vietnam and China when, um, I believe it was 74. When um, China, during one of Vietnam's big offensives towards the south, the Vietnamese communists, the, the Chinese took the Parcells Islands. And um, that was a signal to a lot of people who know Vietnam better than I do that border issues and maritime issues were going to come back to life at the end of the American War. And um, it's still the case today. Some Defense Council, thank you. And I uh, would like to uh, consult uh, your documents, uh, page uh, 202 ER and in English 0023-7907 in French 0063-8468. I would like to uh, quote by reading those who were uh, uh, among the famous um, uh, of the three ghosts who can only kill some pawn, the, the most famous of the three ghosts, continue to rise. He behaved for the Khmer Rouge as he had for uh, Prince Sihanouk. Whatever job he was given him, he accepted and performed to the best of his ability, apparently accepting the strategy and the consequence. He had been an effective cabinet minister for Prince Nurodam Sihanouk. He was just so as the uh, nominal head of state Pol Pot. for Pol Pot. End of quote. I would like to ask you that um, uh, did you know any other information uh, about Mr. Kyo Samporn and your note saying that uh, he was the nominal head of state um, in uh, my quote. Qu'avez-vous à dire à ce sujet? Réponse. Q Sampan, of course, as you read in my material on Q Sampan, you read in the in the previous ones, 
that um, when he was in the cabinet for, for um, then Prince Sihanouk, he, um, he did so well that um, he, people were actually wondering um, why he was doing so well, and then of course he fled. And then um, when he was the head of Gronk, he was the liaison between Sihanouk and, the D and what became the DK leadership. And then under DK, he was the face of the regime. So that's what I'm talking about. Could you uh, explain uh, Clara when you say uh, he was the, the face of DK? So what uh, do you mean by that? During the war and the resistance, two people were known as the leader of the Khmer Rouge, Prince Sihanouk in Beijing and Kyu Sampan. He, when you look at the Gronk material, Q Sampan is the face, and then you have the other two ghosts, but it's Q Sampan, Prince Sihanouk. Then under DK, no longer Prince Sihanouk, as you know, and he resigns. And Q Sampan is the head of state, and he, will ta he takes foreign trips as head of state. He meets delegations as head of state. The microphone of the council was not activated. Uh, council, uh, you uh, said that uh, the foreign trip by Mr. Kusenpon as the head of state and uh, he met with other head of states. Is this uh, your uh, testimony uh, a while ago? No. He met with delegations in Cambodia but he did travel, and he's one of the few DK leaders who were allowed to travel outside of the country. Council uh, expert, uh, could you uh, be more specific? But I would like you to uh, confirm uh, your terms as the three goals. Uh, can you explain um, the meaning of um, uh, these words? <coughs> In the 1960s, Q Sampan had a very high reputation as an intellectual, as a liberal politician, not corrupt, uh, good writer, starting the newspaper L'Observatoire, and two other leftists in Phnom Penh with good reputations were Hu Yun and Hu Nem. When the war began in 1970, and um, after the first years, there was an there was a strong desire on some parts to start negotiations for peace. Um, Son Son, who was mentioned earlier, uh, came to Cambodia to try to make some deal between Lon Nol and Prince Sihanouk. The Americans blocked that. <clears throat> Later, there was an attempt uh, a, a more significant attempt because the Lan Nal army was losing. At that stage, it was said that the three ghosts were dead, that Q Sampan, Hu Yun, and Hu Nim were ghosts, they weren't alive. And that's where the name came from, that they were ghosts, that they were dead. And therefore, it was impossible to reach a peace accord. Et donc, il était impossible de parvenir à un accord de paix. Council, thank you. Um, in response to my uh, earlier question, you said that Kyu Sampan uh, made a foreign trip. Vous avez dit que Sampan s'était rendu à l'étranger. Did you know? Uh, do you know when he? Uh, made that uh, visit uh, during uh, DK, uh, or you don't have um, this kind of date for his uh, travel? 
Well, if I remember correctly, it, he went to Spain during DK. Well, yeah, it was Spain, wasn't it? C'était l'Espagne, n'est-ce pas? Mm -hmm. Spain during Democratic Campuchia, I believe. Je pense. I could be wrong, but that's what sticks je in my mind. Peux me tromper, mais voilà ce dont je me souviens. Council, um, was there any other uh, country that he visited or uh, just uh, Spain? I can't remember, I'm sorry. Council, expert, uh, could you uh, please uh, indicate clearly um, when during uh, DK era, but I would like to know when specifically. I'm afraid I can't remember exact year. Sorry. Je ne me souviens pas de l'année exacte. J'en suis désolé. Council. So, who gave you this information? Can you tell the court? based on your testimony that uh, Kiel Sampon went to Kiel Spain during the DK regime. If I remember correctly, I, pense, si I think it's from FIBIS, foreign broadcast information. I could be wrong. Broadcast information, mais je peux me tromper. Did you have any further information Question. regarding his visit? For instance, from he go visit, what's the purpose of his overseas trip? De ce à par I'm réponse. afraid it's too long ago. I don't remember. Cela remonte à trop longtemps. Je ne m'en souviens pas. J'en suis navré. Question. Thank you. Also, in your book, I'd like to discuss with you a word that you use Dans votre livre, and that you actually use it frequently. That is the word machum in Khmer or the word le center. Machum ou centre. Because you use uh, very frequently the word uh, machum in Khmer or the word the center. Machum ou centre. What do you mean when you refer to the center? Réponse. The top national leadership. C'était l'échelon suprême de l'appareil de direction au niveau national. Question. Can you explain to the court the uh, administrative structure of the Communist Party of uh, Cambodia? Pouvez-vous décrire les structures du PCK? Réponse. Um, <coughs> the, I'm, I'm sorry, but um, je suis in a désolé, few, few minutes, no, I can't. En quelques minutes, non, je ne puis pas le faire. Bah, uh, cancer. Uh, thank you, and Mr. President, I do not have any further Merci. questions. Monsieur le President, President uh, thank you, Council. Le Président, merci, Maître. Today's uh, proceedings uh, come to an end, and uh, we will adjourn today's proceeding now and resume tomorrow, that is Thursday, the 12th of February 2015 commencing from Le 9 o'clock in the morning, and uh, tomorrow we will matin. hear a testimony of a civil Une party civile, by pseudonym to TCCP 303. And the chamber is grateful uh, to Ms. Elizabeth Becker La for Chambre your valuable time Madame and for a very long Becker overseas trip to provide a testimony uh, before this court as an expert in the last few days. And 
your testimony Madame, can contribute to votre ascertaining the truth in the case of 002-02. And now your testimony has come to an end and you may be excused from the court. Vous pouvez and the chamber wish you a great and safe journey back home. Excellent retour chez vous, madame. And court officer, in collaboration Monsieur with the WISU, please assist the uh, arrangement of the transportation of the experts and security guards and strategy to take the two recuse, Anunchi and Kisampon, back to the detention facility and have them return to participate the proceedings tomorrow morning before 9 o'clock. The court is now returned.